I mean, I've set the daily gauge up so I can do a, a positive reading or a direct reading of how much offset we've actually got. I'll bring the camera around so you can actually see the clock face. Right, we'll bring it down to find the lowest point and we'll set the zero. Lowest point there. We'll set a zero. Turn it round so that's 100, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 700 and 44, 45 thou. And I want it 750. I think I'll settle for that. That's a very handy gauge that it's just a cheap cheap clock gauge with a couple of magnets of a computer hard drive glowing on the back. I've had it for years and it's been no problem at all. Works fine. I'm sure I did a video on, on making it. I'm gonna put a piercing cut across this. Right, the next thing to do is drill and bore the hole. That's probably going to be the most difficult thing to get right. It's going to be a good fit on the shaft. It's pointless machine machine any of this off until I get that hole done. Um, I could machine all this and then get the hole wrong and the job will be scrapped. So I'm going to do the hardest thing first, which will be boring that hole. I've got some long series drills, which are real good quality, nice and sharp. So I think I'll be using one of these first just to get a hole through it. That's the oil can we made from Vancouver Keith Givers. Just clear on the spore quite nicely. Once you get a hole all the way through, it's not quite so bad. let things cool down a little bit now. It's still cooled. I'm just going to take this opportunity to knock some of the some of the thickness of this off. I put a centre in just so I can take a fairly heavy cut. And there's no chance of knocking out of the out of the chuck. I've rough machined that, nearly the size. All that's left now is the bolt to finish off tomorrow night when it's fully cooled. The crankshafts will be a dead on inch, and I've got an inch reamer, so it shouldn't be a problem getting out of the size. 
but I'm starting to ball this going to size now, at least to a size big enough where I can get the one inch reamer through. I've had to put a packing piece in here because I couldn't get the border tool to go right through. It was actually hitting that, that little jaw. The other three will be alright. At the minute, it's 940, so that's 60 thou to come out. I only leave a good 10 thou to ream out. Nice light cuts, nice and slow, just to make sure that the bore remains nice and parallel. And you see now it's it's out now at the size and it's bored out the drill hole that I put through the centre. So all that's gone now, so it's running a nice clean material. Now we're getting fairly close to size now. Just taking that with a measurement. Right, and that's got that's ten thou below inch. That's one inch there. Ten thou below. So five thou side that we might take that out very nicely and put a good finish in there as well. I could bore it the size, but I have got an inch reamer so we might as well use it. Run things nice and slow when they're using the reamer. We use plenty of cutting fluid. That's going in nicely. So you can see that's put a beautiful finish in there. You can face this off now, the finish cut on there, finish cut on there, and just put a radius on that. And basically that's this part of the assembly done. This will be our finished cut. Quite nice. I need to break that sharp edge now. Before I take it out of the lathe, I'll bring the crankshaft across and try it in just to make sure that there's a good fit in there. Yeah, that is absolutely the dog's bollocks, that's just what we want. It's a really good fit in there. Nice reading fit. Excellent. Yeah, I'll put it near the four jaw chuck with some aluminium protect as in what I need to do now is turn this piece off that's the piece we use just as a chopping piece we'll get it with a reasonably true it's actually that face here that's got to be true but we might as well clock it in properly find the high point within five thou anyway Right, that's pretty good. I'll just try it on this face. That's the important one. This will find the high point, which is there. This will not take much.
high point again. Pretty good. Okay, that's all in the cell there about. Just make its job and turn. I'll zoom in and you actually see the damage that the chuck did, the four jaw chuck, when we centered it on that face there. It didn't matter, but that's the reason why you don't use a four jaw chuck without protection in if you don't want to damage the face. All you need to do now is machine off this piece here down to that edge there, and that's basically all the lathe work finished on it. Last cut, final facing cut. It's quite reasonable. Just need to rag that hole now. I've loosely assembled it and that's how the assembly it works. I'll move the camera up so you can see the valve moving. Right, the light's not the best in here, but at that point there that will be letting steam into the top of the cylinder. That would stop it. It's now exhausting and that lets steam into the bottom. It's uncovering the, the steam port top and bottom the same amount. It's actually adjustable by that screw there. So basically, that's just something done. It needs drilling. I mean, everything's, everything's loose, so it's fastened together, but it's just to, to verify that we have got the, the screw up right. I was thinking about making another one of these because that's actually been, been failed but I'm not going to, I'm just going to leave it I'm going to leave as much of the original as I possibly can because I'm not restoring it, I'm finishing off what somebody else has already started if this was a new engine I would probably put two little grub screws in there but it's not so I'm going to use a I'll probably make a square headed 516's BSF bolt, possibly with a copper tip on so it doesn't damage the crank when you tighten it up. I am eventually going to make two assembly and put reversing gear on here, but it'd be nice just to get it running first. You know, I'm quite pleased with that. As a Harrison 600, that is absolutely mint. I mean, that bed is completely unmarked. It's absolutely mint. Did you put that plate on top of there? No, that was already there. Because uh, uh, I need one of the, the thing is it's aluminium and the magma won't stick, but it'll stick to that. Yeah, well, that, yeah. that must have been why it was there. Yeah. It was already there. And, uh, 
I mean, not, not leave the mains in good condition, but it's not a patch on this one, I guess. Absolutely mint. And I brought it home in the biggest rainstorm that we've had in, on all the way from the Sunshine Coast yeah. in a rainstorm. No pun intended, if that's a pun. <laughs> if you look at the gears, absolutely. And this one's only got the two selectors on the, the thread cutting gearbox, where mine has the three. Yeah. And it's top speed 750 and mine does a 2000, but it's run through a, an inverter so you could crank it up. But it yeah, is the, absolutely. Uh, VFD there, yeah. There's no way you can see that the ball on the gear change, it's actually, it's still sharp, mine's worn. Oh, is that right? Okay. Yeah, the way, the way with age and it's, uh, yeah. I've got a tool put the same as this for mine, but I've never, I changed it straight away for a, the tool post I use now. And of course this one's Imperial, mine's metric. But if you look at the gib strip, how far the gib strip's out, it's just absolutely doing nothing at all. I mean the bed's absolutely... Oh that's the literature, that's what I got. I'll get that out and go back in. That's what I like to say, nice oily. That's the magic adapter. Yeah. I don't think it's even been used. I don't think it has either. I remember looking even at the pictures on Craigslist. And yeah. I was just, oh, oh, I was beside myself. If you look at here, all the all the relevant bits and pieces are here. The change wheels, the 127 gears there. It's got a collar closer. Four jaw choke face plates, the extra jaws. Absolutely beautiful. It even came with a Ford jaw. They weren't independent closer, but it was a, it was made in India, and I, I just it doesn't work right. It just binds up on me, so I don't know what's whether somebody's dropped it or what. But quite an interesting, interesting weapon there. <laughs> yeah. No doubt it's been used for something tugboat related. Yeah, drilling bore holes and boomsticks. Right. Yeah. But it was it was a Craigslist find, and it was up the Sunshine Coast, which is a ferry ride from here to get it. So it was a ferry one ferry ride up to look at it, yeah, and then another ferry ride up to go get it with so, a pickup. Yeah, from back the yeah, yeah, there. yeah. And then we just used a, a tow truck, and they lifted into the back of the pickup yeah. truck, and and uh, off we came. And then I had it all bundled up with tarps mm. and rope, and man, it, oh, and it rained hard that day. Jesus. But we got her home and no rust, no yeah. no water anywhere. I don't think you'll find a better 140 Harrison than this. Yeah, the but guy even had all the... It's not a 140, it's a Harrison 11 inch. The, the 140 is a metric version of this one. Yeah. And that gap's never ever been out of there. Probably never will be. No. No. Yeah. I've never taken mine out, no need to. No. Once again, it only remains to say thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and as always, a massive thanks for all the well wishes that are coming out towards the way it gave me dark. Thanks very much.